Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and by request, I am going to showcase how I fly fortress bombers, and we're going to take out the B-17G, the flying fortress. Uh, now, there is a B-17D before this, which is also a fortress bomber, and then the B-32. Uh, hopefully the B-29 is also going to behave kind of like a fortress bomber, but I'd almost rather it sacrifice some of the firepower for some more speed. Uh, but and who knows what we're going to be seeing with the Tier 9 and Tier 10. They were very aloof about what we we're going to be getting, so hopefully it's going to be something that's also reminiscent of this fortress style of gameplay. All right, let's go ahead and get into this match real quick. Seems like we're already loading into this battle. Uh, first thing I'll note is that there is a military base to my left and a mining plant to my right. Uh, but the mining plant, I think, is gonna be very important for a bomber aircraft to go after since we're primarily an attack aircraft, right? Uh, meanwhile, the military facility, a multi-role could flip that zone with a combination of bombs and shooting down aircraft. So I should go to where I'm going to be most useful and then I'm going to proceed due north and try and get that military facility. We can already see that our teammates have designated that they're going to go to the military facility and since we have a player in an IL-2 I'm pretty confident they should be able to grab that. Uh, it's right about this moment I'm realizing oh, I'm still in metric. I had a power outage and I had to get a restart going in order to map my system. So I got to remap everything. So if anybody's wondering how I do my setup, here it is in a real quick down and dirty uh, of how I get everything that I have displayed for how I like to see when I'm how I like to see my aircraft set up or my uh, should say display. Now I'm finally back in where I should be, which is in the bomb site mode, and I'm planning this strip of bombing. So the first set of bombs out across this mining facility, and then the tail end of those bombs are dropping here, and the last little bit of bombs on this section. If you can take out the center structure and then two additional sites, that should be enough to fully flip a mining plant. Now we're gonna start making our way north towards that military facility like I mentioned earlier. And we are at a lower altitude and a lot of that is because I like to dip my nose in order to get the speed back up, but then in between zones, I get a little bit of that altitude back. Uh, for whatever boost we burn getting into a zone, uh, we do have the cooler on here in order to get that back up and running. I'm not too worried about losing engines because if I'm losing engines, usually I'm probably just sitting in the tail gunner anyways, and the slower you go, the harder a target you are anyways, and with the amount of guns on this, it's going to work great. Staying out of the enemy's line of fire and their field of vision. Here's Sand Tiger. This is a player. Oh, is he coming for me? Ooh, here comes the battle of the beefy planes. He's got a lot of 50 kills he can bring to bear on me. But I, too, have a lot of 50 kills. And what I'm doing here by doing this slow rotation is I'm actually maximizing the amount of guns I have on him because I actually have three dorsal gun, three dorsal 50 kills, and then we also have two in the tail here. So we're actually gonna accelerate to keep him in that field of view, and then the belly gunner is also possibly firing as well. Bring that gunner back up. Oh, not honed in on him, and come on. Almost. Now we have an X. 50 on me here. We're attracting a lot of attention. But those aircraft all broke off, which is the whole point. And we're kind of flying using our WASD keys to kind of rotate the aircraft around. We're throttling up here drop in the munitions at high velocity in order to get that maximum effect out of the carpet, slowing down over this site so we can get some more of those bombs on target. Apparently we just took out an aircraft with our guns.
Back into the bomb reticle view. Dropping just a little bit early here. Oop, a little bit more squirrely than I would have liked. Flying gunship here. Get a lot of guns on target. Almost got him. Let's get on this Spitfire 1. Maximizing guns on target. Oh, and just as the bombs are coming back up. But hopefully you could see there that we're already up to 8,800 personal points. And you can't say that we didn't do our job when it came to putting some serious damage on the enemy. I'm actually going to head to our military facility. Our bombs were seven seconds from reload, so we'll know that we'll have those back. And we'll respawn with a full boost pool because speed is important. We are going to get air supremacy against us again. But... We'll do our best here to try and mitigate that effect. Hammer down on that boost. We get 60 seconds of it. Getting a little bit lower in the aircraft in order to get that speed up. Having defensive fire is going to allow us to be able to reduce the amount of damage the enemy can get on us. Okay, and drop early. Okay. Getting maximum guns on target right now. And unfortunately, that was a loss. But if I could just say that that is the way that I fly my Fortress Bombers. And as you can see, it ends up yielding us a really good personal point score. Uh, let's go ahead and get into another battle because I feel as though that was just a little bit short. Not exactly what I would like to have highlighted. All right, so here we are at the end result screen. As you can see, we we're able to get 400 capture points. We were able to destroy three aerial targets, and we did 40,000 damage to ground targets. We did hit number one on our team by a significant margin, and we also nearly tripled the amount of points against uh, the enemy's top player on the other team here. Uh, not taking into account there's a bot with 5,000 personal points so like i said let's get into another battle and try and highlight this aircraft's capabilities and how that tactic typically works all right so here we are hopefully for not a repeat of last battle uh, this is also going to have a mining facility uh, we are top tier yet again. They also have a ground attacker that is specialized and a B-17D. Now, there is an airfield in the center. It doesn't mean that we can't go there, but I definitely want to put a lot of my effort into getting that mining facility as early as possible. So we're going to go ahead and dip the nose. We're checking the map here. There we go, and maximum size on the map. So trying to line up my run in here. I think my best bet is gonna be a high velocity. You can see I'm kind of doing these snaking maneuvers that mitigates a lot of the AA fire. It doesn't mean it's not gonna hit me a little bit, but it'll reduce it. Dropping just a little bit early because these are carpet bombs, slowing down over these targets and then dropping in an arc across these 
and hopefully that's enough to be able to flip this out. There's my arc, and yes, we just captured it in a single pass using the V-17. Lower altitude also means more accurate bombing. We're going to go ahead and get some of that altitude back while we're waiting for our regen of our bombs. Burn in a little bit of boost to get back up into optimum engine realm. Now we're going to go with a 10 degree up. I'm going to hit that boost cooler and you'll see how quickly it regens when we're not hitting the boost. If I just hammer down the boost, we'd end up using, oh, we'd end up using a lot of our uh, potential boost that we'd be regaining. So I just get 10 seconds of free boost, right? Instead, we got nearly 15 out of that time period. Okay. Things are a lot more spread out here. Doesn't mean that we can't still have really good effect with our bomb placement. We can actually start now. That was a little bit cattywampus. Not exactly the way I would have liked that to have dropped. We're going to angle like this and now I'm immediately going to hop into the tail gunner. And get on this key 102. Took out one of my gunners. Would love for him to come back. Oh, unfortunately he managed to grab us on that one. We're gonna try something a little bit crazy and aggressive. Heavies are usually going to be a problem, but you could see that if we were to have ignored him, we probably would have fared just a little bit better there. But I'm going to spawn right in the middle. Okay, our bombs are just about up. We're going to head to their mining plant and try and stay ahead of them on this flip-flop of the capture zones here. I spent a lot of time flying with the T depressed. If you hit T, you get into that tail gunner, you can kind of get good view. It keeps your aircraft perfectly level. And if you hit the A and D keys, you can roll from side to side. And you can still adjust the throttle. And I do have pitch up as my Q key. I don't have a pitch down, unfortunately, but it's still going to work out just fine for us. So I think I'm going to make kind of a J hook. We're going to come across to this site and then we're going to hook upwards. Let's see, can we get two bombs there? That'll work. Level off just a little bit. No. Afraid not. Looks like this 102 really has it out for us. Is that a player? It is not. There we go. Still managed to capture that facility. We're not really highlighting a great effort as a fortress aircraft, but maybe we can come down here and be a bit of an AC gunship here.
Doesn't look like anybody wants to play. There is a target. that bomb bay and another match um, this one was successful less personal points not a whole lot of fortress bombing going on but hopefully you got a good idea of how these aircraft like to do those carpet bombing where you're arcing around different sites uh, unfortunately that 102 was being a really good counter to us that what is that a uh, 47 45 37 i think it's a 37 on the tier 5 but the tier 6 they get a 57 and it's really nasty when that thing makes contact and it just rips your aircraft apart so but typically you should be able to counter a lot of those other heavy fighters like you saw in the previous match so quite a disparity right that first match we lost but i feel like we did a really good fortress bombing play but at the same time um we didn't get a win out of it meanwhile in this particular battle we won but our personal performance wasn't necessarily as good as it was in the previous one although still outperforming a lot of the other players uh, this again is specialized but it's specialized because i love flying this type of aircraft it's just a really strong and heavily defensible aircraft uh, and we've actually optimized for giving it some of the best defense we can here with the ultimate reinforced airframe as well as the engine armor protection and this also has the chance to decrease some of the damage from AA. We do have the turret gun laying drive on here because it does allow us to increase the rate of fire. Uh, you can see here we also have increased the burst length and the aim speed. I'm planning on reassembling this until I can get the 10% for the rate of fire, which you can see in the center section here, is you can increase the rate of fire by an additional 10% in addition to the 5% that we currently have in that first grade so that could increase our damage potential even further uh, this aircraft is a very iconic airframe and very powerful and hopefully uh, staying true to what we even see with the b-32 that the b-29 may behave in the same way and whatever aircraft come down the pipe for tier 9 and tier 10 Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you kind of get an idea of at least the way that I play these Fortress Bombers. And as always guys, I'll catch you on the next one.